I'm Jonathan Healy and I'm the composing residence for Ensemble of the Golden Bough. I've had a passion for the music of Frank Bridge ever since I was a lad. There's something so exciting and unique about his sound. Uh, growing up in a brass band, uh, being able to play music by composers like Derek Bourgeois, there was so much of that and in Walton that kind of harked back to him. And, and this lineage from Stanford to Bridge to Britain to the great English composer of the second half of the 20th century, for me, is very much distilled in what Frank Bridge did. At the time, there was so much going on in the country. Bridge was such a strong pacifist. He struggled so much with the conflict he felt inside him of pacifism, a war he didn't really believe in or see the point in, alongside what he knew to be true, that, that the, uh, Britain was a country that needed its empire. And so you have an establishment figure who's also not happy to be in the establishment. And I think you can hear that in his music. There's so much excitement and experimentation. What we see now as, as uh, pastoralist composers, you know, hadn't been set in stone. When Frank Bridge took Cherry Ripe and Sally in our alley in 1916, he was trying to write a piece that would soothe his soul and, and I really believe uh, kind of hark back to something that he feel was being literally destroyed day by day in the, in the height of the First World War. And so this wonderful, very kind of light melody, it's a naval kind of song, is, is kind of fragmented and kind of uh, pulled, pulled apart. This, this wonderful kind of use of taking each phrase, each part of the stanza and layering them up on top of each other with the brilliant rhythmic devices that he's used and that fantastic string writing, which is so exciting. And hearing it, I, I thought this would sound wonderful on brass. This would kind of give a sound that hasn't been heard that much before outside of the kind of uh, outside of the traditional repertoire. But there's something about it that really harks back to Walton, harks back to the Philip Jones Ensemble, and there's wonderful recordings slightly later from London Brass. Cherry Ripe was originally a sea song or a song that was sung by traders in the East End of London. It was a folk song that would have been very much around the late Edwardian time and at the height of the First World War when Bridge was really struggling with his pacifism and how he juxtaposed that alongside his love of his country, what he really wanted to do was to set something that he heard, to set something that was similar to what his teacher Stanford had done with the sea songs and kind of bring it within his lens, within his style. Writing in 1916, he was both trying to hark backwards to something that he feel was being destroyed day by day in the carnage and the violence on the continent, but also look anew. He was obsessed with 
what was being written in France and some of the exciting, light, mellifluous sounds that were being written by the French composers. Uh, he was uh, very aware of Ravel, very aware of Debussy. The colours and the, the, the shade that uh, the Ballet Russe had seen were, were in his mind. And so you have this really very exciting writing that's very English, but also um, very forward-looking. When I heard it for strings, I thought this would just sound fabulous for brass, because we're very lucky as brass players to have had the Philip Jones Ensemble in this country, to have had London Brass and have that brilliant lineage that goes right back to in the 50s and 60s when there were these great English composers writing great English music. But that great English music that was written for brass in the 60s was a reflection of the great English music that was written in the 40s and 50s and 60s by Britain, by Vaughan Williams, and that goes straight back to Bridges' teaching, which goes straight back to Stanford. Thank you. 